We're looking at interpreting computer output. We've already done some computer output with regression, but that was kind of a long time ago. But here's the thing, if you're going to be doing any kind of statistics professionally or academically, you're going to not be pulling out your Nspire calculators in order to do it. I mean, those are great learning tools and they do practically everything we need them to do, but they do have their limitations for more advanced things and they're not quite as easy as just you know doing things from a stat software package that you might be able to just work off of for on a computer so um, we have mini tab output uh, there are other kinds there's SPSS there's SAS there's a number of different ones and they basically all work the same you enter numbers in as though it were an Excel spreadsheet and then you just r run whatever you need to run. So we can do regressions, we can do um, single variable analysis, like one var stats, two var stats, uh, any kind of uh, Z testing for proportions, T testing for means, uh, anything we could ever want, those things can handle. So, um, and the output is pretty much uh, consistent from package to package as well, because we, you know, it's not an idea of just kind of learning an Apple operating system or a PC operating system. It's you just need these things for your journals, for your reports, and so the output input process has to be kind of similar between all of them. So if you learn this, you'll learn all the other ones too. So what we've got here is some mini tab output. Uh, it was. Uh, using data from an article television viewing and physical fitness in adults and hey it's got a citation so looks like it's the real thing um, the author hopes to determine whether or not time spent watching television is associated with yeah is associated with so it looks like since this is a two-way table that we're dealing with a chi-square goodness of I'm, I'm sorry a chi-square test of independence um, subjects were asked about their television viewing time and were classified as physically fit if they scored in the excellent or very good category on a step test. So this is one sample. We're looking for an association. So this is a chi-square test of independence. Uh, it won't tell you what kind of chi-square test you basically <laughs> you know, have to figure out just by reading it what it is. Uh, the com uh, computers can't distinguish between homogeneity and independence, so we can handle that much. But here's the data as though you might enter it. You know, you've got labels going across, labels going down, and it looks like you have four rows and two columns. So this is four by two. And there's no subtotals, there's no grand total, no marginal totals at all but it's enough to run through the program. So we run it through the program and we end up with what we see here. This is the first section right here and it, it is set up to be pretty much uh, coinciding with all of the different parts to the original. For example, like right here, this piece is, corresponds to this right here. So we not only have the value, we also have the expected count. All right, we are used to seeing it in parentheses, but you can tell it's expected because it's decimal. You know, observed can't be a decimal, but expected is. So um, if you look down here, this one right here, the 629, it matches up to this 629. So while this dimensions are four by two, this is four by two, and then the chi-square contributing parts, that is also four by two. So you can match them up pretty well. Uh, here, the uh, contributing part of the chi-square is going to match up to the other two that I had colored up there in red, and then this one here will match up to all the ones that I have in green. All right, so what else do we have here? Um, we have all the observed and expecteds. We've got um, subtotals here and here. These are subtotals. And here's your grand total for the entire table. 
probably should use a different color for that. So let's let's do that. Let's see. Um, let's go with. I don't have too many color choices. Uh, this one. So I pick one you can't see. That's good enough. All right. So um, yeah. So that's kind of what we're used to seeing. Um, a completed table with observed and expected. Here are the pieces of the chi-square, uh, total chi-square test statistic, and so here is the actual chi-square value right there. So that's pretty good. Um, and you have the degrees of freedom right, right here and the p-value of your test. So really, almost the only thing that's left to do is write up the test. Um, don't forget, for the degrees of freedom manually, that would be one less than four is three, one less than two is one, three times one is three. So that checks out. So I filled in the chi-square test statistic, which I checked up here in black. I wrote in the degrees of freedom. And which cell contributes the most to the chi-square statistic? It happens to be the one that I um, circled up here in red. So it's this one right here. And so it's uh, the physically fit who watch no TV. And that's kind of how I labeled it. Um, if you want to know the smallest contributing value to the chi-square statistic, it would be the one in green, this one, just coincidentally. And um, that would be the not physically fit uh, TV watchers of one to two hours, right? And you can number them. I did that. Um, but the description is probably as good or better, right? So um, what else do we have to do? State the hypothesis, show the necessary work, and the conclusion. So I did this with the kids sitting there, and um, yeah. So uh, HO is watching television and cardiovascular fitness are independent. Remember, independent is always HO. That means not related, no effect, you know, that kind of thing. And then HA is watching television and cardiovascular fitness are not independent. All right, um, they didn't say anything about randomness, so we're just gonna assume it. Population is 10 times the sample size. And I wanted to point out something to you, and that something is right here. All right, this is a cell. And you notice that this value is less than five. Is that a violation of assumptions? And a bunch of the kids in the class said it was. But it is that no expected counts are below five. Four is not an expected count. It's an observed count. And the expected that goes along with it is over five. And if you look at all of them, they're all over five. So we're actually very fine with, our, with that um, uh, with, with that assumption, with that condition. So it is a chi-square test of independence. There's the three values. And the p-value is 0 0.104, which is bigger than 0 0.05, bigger than 0 0.10. So I'm gonna fail to reject. That's fairly high. I mean, it's not huge, but it's fairly high. And the results are not significant, and we fail to reject HO. So you have sufficient evidence that watching television and cardiovascular fitness are independent. Um, okay, if they're independent, that means they're not related. If they're not related, that means you don't need to go back up here and try to figure out, you know, if there's some kind of a trend within the data that you can write as a follow-up. So no need to look for a trend means no follow-up. So don't, okay, you're done. And I apologize for how faint this came out, but I don't know, I'm gonna to have to check my program and see why this is coming out so faint. All right, we have more on the next page, so stand by as I pause. All right, that didn't take long. Um, this is the next one, and we've got a coin purchaser. They decide to grade a shipment of coins according to their physical condition, with each coin being classified. A is very fine, or better, B is very good or fine, C is good or, uh, good or below. And they also broke them up by decade. So we have some mini tab output again. Is there sufficient evidence at a 1% level? All right, so we're talking about, that's alpha, to indicate a dependency between the condition of the coin and its date. And I pretty much had the kids just kind of 
you know, dive in and answer the questions below. But we can start out, this is a three by five, so that's two times four, it should be eight degrees of freedom, which it is. And here is your chi-square number, right? And all your observed and expected, your marginal distribution, your grand total. So uh, your chi-square is 208.891, that's pretty huge. Degrees of freedom are eight, and which cell contributes the most to the chi-square statistic? So let's find the biggest um, contributor. Uh, there's a lot here. There's 15 cells, but I believe that that is it. All right, that goes along with um, this here, right? It's the lower left. So that should then go along with this here. So those are coins graded C at a C level from the 1950s, all right? And that's what we have. And then which cell contributes the least to the chi-square statistic? All right, so um, this one's a little harder to find, um, but I believe it's this one. And that matches up to this, because they, they're all you know in the same dimensions. And that should match up to this, which are the B-rated coins from the 1920s. Right? And I think I have that. All right, so then the hypothesis, show work necessary, blah, blah, blah. All right, so here they all are. And we're supposed to um, indicate a dependency. Whoa, that's a chi-square test of independence. It makes sense because it looks to be one sample that they just kind of separated out by decade and coin grade. So um, you can pause here and copy this down if you want. Um, the p-value and the um, computers don't mess around. They're not going to give you little bitty numbers times 10 to the whatever. They're just going to say zero. So we've got practically no possibility of you know, avoiding rejecting HO. So we're going to do it. And it's even, you know, a P is way less than alpha. So you have strong evidence to believe that coin grading does, dep does depend on the date of the coin. Okay, so it's gonna be a little tough the more cells that you have to figure out, you know, where um, all these discrepancies might be. So here's what I would suggest, all right? Um, this is a pretty big discrepancy right here, right? You expected, um, let's see, this would be um, 1950s uh, graded A. We um, expected 128.56 and got 207. So there's more than expected. Sorry, that color's kind of terrible. Let me just change that. Something that you can actually see. So again, it's this. And we're getting way more than expected. And then let's just come down, um, I don't know, uh, let's see. It's so hard with this, but if you look at like these two, it looks like we're getting less than expected. And these are the older coins. They seem to be graded. Um, we're expecting more of the A and B and we're getting less. So that's kind of what I said. I said newer coins have a higher rating than expected while older coins have a lower rating than expected. But the thing is when you have 15 cells like this, it's very common that a lot of the discrepancy is just kind of randomly scattered throughout it. And it might be hard to find an overall trend. When you have fewer cells, it does tend to be a little bit more obvious. So my advice would be to just do your best match it up as well as you can and if you can argue the point then you'll win the point when it comes to writing up a follow-up okay so this is what we covered